Wann beginnen wir? When do we start a non-invasive ventilation therapy? Here we need to distinguish between two groups of patients. One group is the full-term infant who has trouble adapting to breathing after birth, which means the child simply has difficulties taking in air. These are relatively short-term issues, which are over after a short few hours. We then start them on classic non-invasive ventilation. As I said, however, as a rule, this situation has somewhat of a time limit. The other group of patients is the premature babies. Most of these infants need non-invasive breathing ventilation. Therefore, we always start them, even with the smallest premature babies. We know that we can often treat premature babies with CPAP, non-invasive ventilation alone. When we see that this is not enough and that the child needs more support, we switch to invasive ventilation. What are the different methods of non-invasive ventilation? The classical method is the so-called CPAP method and stands for continuous positive airway pressure. We give continuous positive airway pressure to the child's airways. The second method is the NIPPV, which can also go by another term, but ultimately it is classical ventilation, meaning it's ventilation under time pressure levels. Here, we set a pressure level referred to as PEEP, and an upper pressure level that affects the child's airways. There are studies that compare these two methods and have shown advantages to using the NIPPV as well as those that have not. To this day, it's still not quite clear if it actually brings any benefits. As far as the equipment for non-invasive ventilation is concerned, let's have a closer look at what we actually need. To start, we need a machine that gives us pressure flow. We need oxygen. And then we need something to bring that pressure flow to the child's airways. In reference to the child's airways, there are masks that you can put over the nose and there are prongs that you can put in both nostrils. There is also the possibility of using shortened prongs in the tubes, also known as mononasal prongs. These have less and less of a clinical significance because we simply know that we can only breathe through the nostrils. In addition, the long tubes have a high resistance, so much of the pressure is lost. Today, the routine is to use both masks and the prongs. What equipment do we need to generate the pressure and give both oxygen and flow? There are simple devices, such as bubble CPAP systems. For this, we actually only need a flow meter, preferably one with a blender to regulate the inspiratory oxygen concentration. The whole thing is placed into a box in which there is water, and via the immersion depth of the rod, which hangs in the water, the pressure is regulated and the whole thing is then connected to the child's respiratory tract. It is a very simple system that can also be used and exploited in countries that perhaps do not have large financial resources. There it is used a lot, and it is a system which works very well. Of course, if you have the luxury to use a ventilator, perhaps you can use different ones. In this case, of course, we have the possibility to define the flow in the ventilator, or in very modern devices, the flow is regulated automatically. And I only need to adjust the pressure. Of course, I also have the possibility to adjust the inspiratory oxygen concentration. The big advantage of using a ventilator is of course having a ventilator that can handle other forms of ventilation which I can use on the premature baby. This means that I have a device at the patient's bedside and can use it for all situations, from non-invasive ventilation to high-frequency ventilation. In our neonatal intensive care unit, 
we chose one device with which we can perform a wide range of therapies possible today. We decided to have a baby log VN500 at every place where a child may need to be ventilated, and thus have a device with which we can perform all ventilation forms that are necessary and possible today. The results are that I have a device at the baby's bedside and can start with non-invasive ventilation. And when I see that's not enough for the child, I can switch to invasive ventilation with the same device, including performing high-frequency ventilation, all forms of therapy in one place. But we also use simple bubble CPAP devices. Due to some equipment bottlenecks, and you don't have enough equipment available for these situations, we also have the possibility to ventilate with the classic bubble CPAP, which in many cases is completely sufficient and possible. When it comes to accessories for non-invasive ventilation, we use both masks and prongs, so it is important for us to be able to interchange them. Experience has shown that some children cope better with prongs and some better with masks. The main argument for this is to make the change easy and not to damage the sensitive skin of premature babies, as well as to be able to avoid these damages by alternating them. In order to prevent or minimize problems during non-invasive ventilation, we can also introduce the rotation principle. This means that the mask and prongs are interchanged in order to prevent the same pressure points on the skin from being stressed again and again. Interchanging them means that there will always be other places on which this pressure is exerted. Therefore, we can prevent these skin lesions from becoming worse or even from becoming a larger ulceration. Non-invasive ventilation has become well established in the field of neonatology. We know that it is a safe method compared to invasive ventilation. We also know that lung protection offers some advantages. It is worthwhile to start with non-invasive ventilation, even with very small premature babies who are at the limit of their viability, and to be able to escalate when necessary. But we know that NIV has become very important in the ventilation of premature babies nowadays.